Jones steps up. Ricketts is at the high point. Jones. Aromaterio has a lane. Nicholas Aromaterio, the shot. Scores! Holy jumping! The Italian stallion puts the puck in the back of the net. Mamma mia, Nicholas Aromaterio! So the chief it in and does. Callum Jones reports at the blue light kept in by the skate of Thomas Maya. Maya. Down low on the half course, he swings out of the slot for Potts. Kyle Potts has it, hangs on, now he shoots, scores! Holy jumping! How do you do? Kyle Potts puts the puck in the back of the net. Blocked that shot, and coming the other way is Alton McDermott, he's in on the breakaway, scores! Holy jumping! His grandfather, Paul Henderson, must be ecstatic about that one because Alton McDermott just scored his first career Buckland Cup final playoff goal has been pulled. The Dukes are in the Oakville zone. Zone Elvis swung that around. The Blades are trying to tie this puck up. It goes into the corner. The Blades have a chance to get this out. Elvis will tie it up. Ten seconds. Gilmore has it at the point. It's in. Tips just wide. Seven seconds. It's back in the corner. Ewing's blocking. Three, two, one. The Oakville Blades. Oh! You're watching Mamma Mia! This is Fire Talk with Nicholas Fiore. Welcome back, everybody, to episode number 15 of Mamma Mia! This is Fire Talk. I am joined by newly signed with the Toronto Marlies in the AHL, Riley McCourt. Riley, thanks for joining, man. We appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah, I know for sure. Thanks for having me on. I'm excited. So we just spoke a little bit before we came on, and I said, well, a little bit of a professional setup here for, for, for a professional ice hockey player. You haven't said that too much, have you? <laughs> no, no, it sounds crazy when you say it. I think it's something as a kid you dream of, and um, just to hear it you know, come out of your mouth, is it's kind of surreal. So it's, it's a neat feeling for sure. Obviously, you've played, um, you've played some junior and you've played some – OHL, we're going to get to that. But where were you when, when you found out you were going to get signed by the Marlies and how excited were you? Yeah, I was actually just hanging out of my house and um, I got kind of you know, an unexpected call from my agent and um, I didn't know kind of what it was about or, or what, um, you know, the deal was. But uh, I picked up and I kind of went downstairs and, um, you know, talked to him alone for a little bit. And, um, you know, he said, uh, you know, they want to offer me a contract and he thought it was a good opportunity for me. And, um, you know, I was just over the moon. I couldn't, I couldn't put into words how excited I was and, you know, to be so close to home and, um, you know, such an organization, uh, you know, great organiza organization like um, the Marlies have. It's, uh, it's special and something that I'm definitely excited to, to continue. And obviously it is exciting because you get to stay home too. And, and maybe the parents are going to come to the games and, and it's just, it's an easy access to how important is it for, to have that support system as well? Yeah, it's huge. I think, uh, I mean, at the start of my OHL career, um, being in Hamilton, I was close to home and then obviously moving away to, to Flint, I wasn't as close and it was a little harder for, um, you know, friends and family to, to get to my games and stuff like that. But now being in such a, um, you know, kind of a location like Toronto where, um, you know, I have family down in Brockville, Ontario, so it's not too far away. And then um, my hometown, St. Catharines, Ontario, it's right there. So, um, it's going to be neat kind of having, um, you know, my family uh, at pretty much every game. And, um, you know, if I want to go home and um, spend some time with them, I'll, I'll be able to drive home and spend some time with them. So uh, I, I couldn't work out any better. And as a 2000, you know, 20 years old, you've done some stints, of course, in the OJHL and, and in junior hockey. But how humble are you to have this opportunity at such a young age as well? Yeah, it's, it's so humbling and, and I'm just so thankful that, um, you know, they showed, showed enough, um, you know, um, just, uh, just kind of effort. Yeah, just faith. yeah, faith in me and, um, to, you know, to kind of offer me this, this contract and, um, you know, the trust in me, they showed that, um, you know, they think I can play at the next level and, um, you know, my job is to prove them right and show them that, uh, you know, they made the right decision and, um, just kind of help the organization continue to, uh, you know, win championships and win hockey games. Obviously, to get to this point, you had to play a lot of hockey. And you started with uh, 
Ridley College, um, but with two years there. And then you moved on to the GOJHL. Sometimes you see guys jump from the like the colleges or like all that little minor hockey, youth hockey to junior eight in the OJHL. But you went to the GOJHL, you stayed at home, St. Catharines, and then obviously you made the jump to the OHL with the Hamilton Bulldogs. How was that uh, decision and experience to say, let's do junior B? And then obviously, how did the OHL uh, approach you? Yeah, so I think, uh, you know, my dad, he was a coach in the OHL, and um, I kind of grew up around around the league and around junior hockey. So at a young age, it was kind of something I had set in my mind um, in what I wanted to do. And um, obviously getting drafted to Hamilton, it was, it was a great spot. And it was close to home. And, um, you know, it's just an opportunity that I couldn't really pass up. So when I was offered, um, you know, the card to sign as a 16-year-old, I was, I was thrilled. And, um, you know, it was something that uh, I couldn't pass up for sure. So I just, I jumped to the opportunity and, um, you know, just kind of ran with it from there. Four years in the OHL overall, you played with Hamilton, uh, only 35 games, 10 points. Remember, you are a defenseman, right? So points are a little bit harder to come by than a, uh, a forward like a Steven Stampos and so on and so forth. You know what I mean? But you, you, got, you, got your, you, you got your time and you got your time when you moved to Flint. When you moved to Flint, uh, the Firebirds there from 2017 to 2020, 140 games played, 107 points um, regular season, of course, with Flint. How did Flint help you kind of get to the point where you are now, but also explain uh, how your time was in Flint? Yeah, I definitely wouldn't be uh, where I am today without Flint and, uh, you know, the coaching staff there and, and just the organization there and the trainers and, um, you know, top to bottom from everyone in the organization, my teammates. Um, it's a first class organization. It's a place that I think there's a lot of misconceptions about. But, um, you know, when you get there and, um, you know, you see the city and, and the fans and how passionate they are and the way you get treated, it's it's first class. And, um, you know, when I walked, when I got in there, um, you know, obviously the team wasn't the strongest. And um, I think for me, I wanted to come in and, um, you know, as a young team and just kind of, uh, you know, gel with them and, um, you know, kind of build something, uh, you know, towards the future. And I think, uh, you know, this year we kind of showed that and we, and we did that, but just the opportunities they gave me, um, you know, to play power play and, um, you know, penalty kill and, and lots of five on five minutes was huge for me. And it was big for my confidence as well. So, I definitely wouldn't be where I am today, um, you know, without all their support and, and, and their help and, um, you know, the video that they would show us and, uh, you know, they'd break down clips and um, it was just, it was amazing. And, um, you know, it just helped me, uh, you know, kind of round out my game as a whole and um, just kind of help me, um, you know, to, to be the player I am today for sure. 117 points in 175 games um, as an OHLer. Uh, that's pretty damn good if I don't say so myself on the blue line. How can you now translate that into maybe trying to produce as much as you can, as early as you can um, with the Marlies? I think just playing with confidence. I think, um, you know, confidence is a big thing in this game and, um, you know, you can't be afraid to make plays and, um, you know, just because I'm playing at a higher level, um, you know, I can't be scared to, uh, you know, play my game and, and rush the puck and, um, you know, join the rush and make, make plays. So I think for me, uh, you know, confidence is a huge thing and, um, you know, as well as it's a tough level. And, um, you know, I know um, it's a big step and I still have a lot to learn and um, I still have a lot to grow and, you know, areas in my game, I have to grow to, to become a pro and, you know, to become, uh, you know, someone that can make, make a big impact. But I think the biggest thing for me is, uh, you know, my confidence and just continuing to, uh, you know, build that and, um, you know, watch video and, uh, you know, just build my skills, um, you know, best I can. Obviously, as mentioned, you, um, you, you started in the junior B ranks. Uh, what's the difference between the GOJHL to uh, the, o the OHL essentially? Yeah, I mean, they're both obviously great leagues. And as a 16 year old stepping into to the GOJHL and having the chance, uh, you know, I did to play for the Falcons was big. And um, I think I see, see a lot of guys in that league, uh, you know, that play in the OHL or, um, you know, they're going on to play CIS and, um, you know, there are other high levels of hockey, but um, for me, it was just, it was the speed and, um, you know, I think the skill of, of a lot of guys and, you know, you see a lot of high end guys now, um, you know, coming out of the OHL and first round picks and, um, you know, guys stepping right into the NHL after getting drafted. So 
I think the OHL, um, you know, it's just a very, very high paced league and, uh, you know, there's a lot of skill, skill coming out of it for sure. But um, I think my first year as a 16 year old playing for the Falcons, it definitely gave me, um, you know, kind of a little edge and kind of a little bit of, uh, you know, understanding and, um, you know, something to, to know what to expect when I, when I made that jump as a 17 year old. Absolutely. And like I said, like you're saying, you know, you're still young and you still have so much time and room to go to grow and to go. <laughs> but you, you've also been to two NHL camps and you've gotten some experience as well. Um, you went to the Dallas camp in 2018, the Boston camp in 2019. Um, if you want to touch upon both or just the overall experience um, and what you learned from those NHL camps. Yeah, they were big. I think for me, um, as an 18 year old, um, the Dallas camp, I think going into that draft, um, you know, you expect to be drafted, uh, you know, no matter what. And, um, you know, it's kind of a goal you have in place and something you want to accomplish. So after I didn't get drafted, obviously it was a little disappointing, but, um, I got a call probably two minutes after the draft saying, um, to pack my stuff. And I was, I was headed to Dallas. So, um, I knew it was going to be a great opportunity for me to just learn and, um, you know, kind of see what the pro lifestyle was about. And, um, you know, hear some, some higher end, uh, you know, hockey people talk and see what they had to say and, um, you know, kind of get a different perspective on the game, which was, which was huge for me. And then um, in Boston last year, it was, it was a great experience. I mean, I was playing with guys who, um, you know, played for Boston in the playoffs and, you know, we're up with them for, for the majority of the season. So, um, you know, playing with that in that rookie tournament was, was great as well as the competition. I said, you know, I, there's several guys who, who were NHL mainstays this year and, um, you know, guys who play in playoffs and, um, you know, guys who play on a consistent basis that I was playing against. So I think just kind of get to see, um, you know, how they handle themselves off the ice and on the ice, um, you know, was something that I, I kind of just try to soak in and, um, you know, take back to me with you or with me in junior um, and kind of be like, be like they were. And, um, you know, just kind of watch their habits um, was my biggest takeaway. And, how hard you have to work to, to be a pro hockey player. So uh, those two camps were definitely big for me. And, um, you know, they're a huge, huge reason, reason in, uh, you know, my development and kind of showing me, showing me how hard I have to work. And another, another huge reason in anyone's development would be the, uh, the determination, you know, the hard work and the work ethic. And you've had to have that over the years um, with overcoming injuries. You've overcame a few injuries and, Obviously, you need to overcome those if you want to get to the spot that you are now and even further on in, the, in your career. Um, touch upon how, you know, you have to have the right mindset to overcome these injuries to then eventually get opportunities like this one. Yeah, it's huge. And I think, um, you know, I never had uh, a very severe injury till, till my third year, I guess, um, you know, when my shoulder, when my shoulder happened. But I think for me, um, you know, I was always disappointed when it happened and um, I kind of, you know, sat back and said, why me? Like, why this happened to happen this year? And, um, you know, I, I had, a, you know, expectations for that season, but I think I had a lot of conversations with different people and, um, you know, at the end of the day, they said, you can use this time to, you know, be sorry for yourself self and feel down or, you know, you can, like, like you said, have a good mindset and, um, you know, just kind of, show up to the rink every day and, you know, enjoy being around your teammates and, um, you know, use the time in the gym to get stronger and, um, you know, watch hockey games and, and see kind of the game from a different angle. And I think that was huge for me when I look back now, because I, you know, I see, you see things when you're watching the stands that you don't necessarily see on the ice. And I think for me, I could kind of see, you know, there's more time and space than maybe I would have thought and, you know, more room to make plays or, you know, if a guy made this play, I could kind of see, oh, if, that was, if I was in that position, I can make this play instead or just little things like that that, you know, were big for me. And, um, you know, it was obviously good being around my teammates and stuff like that. And, um, you know, all my buddies, uh, you know, made it a lot easier for me, which was great. But I think if something like that happens, um, you know, just having having a positive mindset and, um, you know, that everything's going to work out and, um, you know, everything kind of happens for a reason, I guess you could say. So that's kind of what I did and just try to take everything in stride. And um, I, it worked out. Let me tell you something, buddy. You, you didn't feel sorry for yourself. You want to know why? Because you got that logo right there. That, Tor that Toronto Marley logo, buddy. Yeah, and you, worked, yeah. you, you didn't feel bad for yourself. You worked hard. You worked your tail off and you, uh, you earned that. So well done. And it's tough because you see a lot of, even these NHLers, right? These European players, they go through injuries that are just gruesome and, and tough to get back. But 
if they want to make that money and they want to still play the game they love, they're going to work their tail off in order to get back. So well done on you. Kudos on you to get there. And obviously it landed you with a position with the Marlies now. So that's well done. Looking, looking forward. Um, I, I was told that uh, you have some self-proclaimed stuff that you like to call yourself in the, uh, in the OHL, or should I say everyone calls you in the OHL best dressed guy, best looking guy in the O. What's going on here? Is this true? Or this, is this all factual? <laughs> I mean, I, I like to think so. I think I, I'm a confident person. So I kind of, I, I like to think that I like to say that sometimes, but um, you know, it's always funny guys kind of, you know, showing up in their suits and, you know, we'll say who, who's got a good on or, you know, kind of give a guy a job. He's got a bad <laughs> one. So I kind of, I try to pride myself on, being a good dress guy and having good style and um you know I, i'm a big style guy so i like to i like to think i'm i, I got the good style for sure there you go I, I had to put you on the spot there buddy hey the truth hurts right <laughs> seriously, seriously. Hey, if you're gonna say you gotta you gotta own up to it you gotta own up to it there you go that's awesome stuff moving forward now um to the ahl season your first ahl season let's let's hope it does get going obviously during uh covid19 which halted so many things in the world um what are you most looking forward to uh to your first pro season and um obviously the return to play hopefully very soon I mean obviously I think the biggest answer is playing hockey again I think it's something that you know I've missed for so long and um you know you can practice all you want or um you know work out all you want or uh you know play four and four all you want but I think nothing kind of, you know, is equal to, you know, you stepping on the ice and, um, you know, wearing, wearing a jersey and, uh, you know, getting ready to play a game and, and go to war and, um, you know, just do what you love day in and day out. So I think that's just the biggest thing for me. And then, like you said, my first postseason, I think just the word speaks for itself. It's, it's exciting and, um, you know, it's almost going to be a dream come true when um, you know, I get to play, play my first game. So, I think just all that and then, um, you know, being back around the guys and, um, you know, just, just having fun, having fun with it. And, um, you know, just working every day is something that um, I'm excited to, to get back to. Have you heard anything on the AHL's return to play on, on, on what the league wants to do or just it's all quiet right now because no one knows anything really? Yeah, I think it's still up in the air. Right? I think the the December fourth start date was kind of when they were trying to target, but um, you know, as of right now, that's kind of that's what it is. And I think until we hear otherwise, that's kind of what what I'm planning for and what uh, I'm working towards. Obviously, it's tough as any athlete um, of any sport to get into a starting lineup, no matter what sport it is. Um, and obviously in hockey, defensemen, there's only six of you that can play on a given night. Maybe the odd seven if you're going with 11 forwards. Um, the Marlies and the Leafs in general don't really like to do that. They like to roll their 12 forwards and their six D-men. You're going to have some competition, as, as obviously you knew. Let's be, let's be honest, right? And, and healthy competition as, as it would be. But in the likes of, you know, Rasmus Sandin and Timothy Lilligren and Martin Marinson, um, Hollowell, Wachewski, Callie Rosen, and uh, former OHL as well as Noel uh, Hoffenheimer there from Ottawa in the OHL, um, the Ottawa 67s. There's, there's depth. Uh, Duzak is there as well. What do you have to do? How hard do you have to work to say, I know I'm new, I know I'm young, but I'm cracking this roster and this lineup? Yeah, I mean, all those guys are, are, are obviously, you know, unbelievable hockey players and, um, you know, um, I think for me, it's just kind of stick to my game and, um, you know, I can't be, you know, something that I'm not, I think I just, you know, I, I got to where I am for a reason today and, um, you know, I'm not going to be someone, someone I'm not, or, or, you know, pretend to be something that I'm not or, or do things that I don't usually do. I'm just gonna, you know, do what I do. Uh, I'm going to work hard, you know, night in, night out. And, um, you know, if I'm out of the lineup one night then um, you know, not, you know, not get down to myself, just, you know, continue to work hard and, um, you know, just do everything I can to, to make that lineup and, and make an impact. And I was going to say the AHL, I mean, I was going to, I mean, you know, it, I'm not there, you know, huh? that's why I'm doing this, but you're on the ice and you, and you know that in the AHL, they, they roll with so many different guys on so many different nights, almost just like the ECHL really. It's like, there's no need to get yourself uh, down on yourself because you know, you're still probably going to get that opportunity because they have to see who you are and what you give. Right. How important is it to then get your opportunity and make it count? Yeah, I think it's the same thing as, um, you know, starting in the OHL. 
I said, as a 16 year old, I was, you know, cracking that, trying to crack that lineup with, um, you know, Justin Lemke and, uh, you know, Riley Stillman and Ben Gleason and, um, you know, all these guys who, um, you know, were older guys and, you know, played in the league for a long time and, um, you know, were obviously great hockey players as well. So I think uh, I'm not going to approach the situation any different than, you know, I have before. I think it's just, um, you know, continue to work hard and, um, you know, do, do, do what I can to, um, you know, just, just get in the lineup every night and, um, you know, whether that's work hard or, um, you know, what it is. But I think just if I stick to my game plan and, um, you know, I do the things they ask me to do, then, um, you know, I'll, I'll hopefully have, have a good shot. So Toronto Marley's AHL first pro contract, has it gotten any old yet? <laughs> I mean, not yet. I don't think it's ever going to get old. I don't exactly. Think it's there you go. First pro contract. I think I'll, I'll remember it forever. That's awesome, man. And, and, and obviously you should remember it forever and it's a big step and a new journey. Um, and I wish you the best of luck within that journey. I appreciate you coming on here. Um, when I made the reach out, you know, you're great. Uh, some, some, some kids going into these leagues say, ah, I don't know, maybe I'm a little too good for it, but, <laughs> you know, all, all the jazz, right. But you know, you, you were more than willing. Um, obviously shout out to Garrett Rutledge, uh, who's with Saginaw now as an associate coach and video coach and Dominic Henning, um, the play-by-play broadcaster for the Flint Firebirds in the OHL, who knew, who you know both very well to uh, have the assist in getting this done. So I appreciate them and I appreciate you, Riley. Uh, best of luck moving forward and uh, all the best with the Toronto Marlies. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks for having me on. I had fun. All right, everyone. That's episode 15 of Mamma Mia. This is Fire Talk with Riley McCourt, newly signed defenseman for the Toronto Marlies in the AHL. Follow us on all social media platforms. This episode has been a great one, and there's going to be a lot more to come, as well as Instagram Lives. I'm Nicholas Fiore for the Oakville Blades in the OJHL. That's Riley McCourt for the Toronto Marlies in the AHL. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Mamma mia. Now Davis takes it and looks to come the other way. Davis is in, trying to drive, and he will look to go across. Good play to Davis, though, to get it right back to him. He goes down low to Israel's. Centering, it's there. Scores! Stevie, Stevie, Stevie! Steven Weddle scores his first OJHL playoff goal for the Oakville Blades. This game is opening up in a big way for both teams. Ricketts, centering, what a pass, Israel's breakaway, the move, scores! What a goal for the Alaska Fairbanks commit, the assistant captain, Harrison Israel's, with an absolute dandy. Download Alliance, Jack Lyons, centering, scores! The double jacks combine as the, that puck popped up like a jack in a box, and it's Jack Ricketts from Jack Lyons. 6-1 on the 40th shot of the game. It's all over. Well, like Smith hits it in. A chance here can develop, but the Blades will look to take it. And, is, and Ricketts finds Israels. Breakaway, Israels. A chance. Backhand. Rebound. Scores! And the Oakville Blades win it here in Toronto. Blades win. Blades win, Blades win! That was Mamma Mia! This is Fire Talk with Nicholas Fiore. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next episode.